Hello everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Valmore. So before I get started today, I just want to thank all the ends. I've passed 500 subscribers, and that's an amazing number, and I'm just so excited and grateful that Ian's decided to join me. I also want to throw out another call to action for the next steps after Heroes Feast completes, because we're almost there. So after some of the previous comments I received the last time I put out a call to action, I think I'm going to take a little bit of the advice. Yin's wanted to see more than just one cookbook. A bunch of Yin's wanted to see some of my personal recipes. I think with the next phase, I'm going to mix things up. Like I said, I am going to do some of my own recipes, as well as I'm going to go through a couple of different cookbooks. I decided I want to do the Overwatch cookbook because reading through the table of contents, it has a very international flair to it. And I'm excited to try recipes that I've never made before or I've only made once and, and getting, getting actual recipes. So that, that's exciting. So I'm going to go with the Overwatch cookbook. I've also decided I want to do the Cthulhu cookbook because of the weird stories I can get with it, but also because it has one of the best names of a cookbook, the Necronom Nom Nom. And finally, I want the last cookbook to be another one with a bunch of high fantasy elements. And that's where Yin's come in. So in the comments or over on my Twitter, I'll leave a poll. But which would you rather see? There is the Elder Scrolls cookbook, which looks interesting. It's another massive cookbook with a lot of, which will have a lot of probably fun video game bits from all five plus Elder Scrolls games. And then earlier this year, they released a second WoW cookbook. I want you to pick between one of those two. And that's where I want to take us next. Now, without further ado, it's time for today's recipe from Hero's Feast. So I'm taking a step away from dwarves, and this recipe is going to come to us from the tieflings. This is fire-spiced abyssal chicken kebabs. Let's get started. And so for the kebabs, I am going to cut up some poblano peppers, some red onion, bacon, and chicken. So for the dry rub, I put together a spice mix of smoked paprika, brown sugar, chili powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper. And then I just mix it together. And now I'm going to put in the chicken. And I'm just going to toss that together. In another bowl, I'm going to put in the poblano peppers and the red onion. Pour in some olive oil, a little bit of salt, and some pepper. And I'm just going to toss those around. Now finally, I'm going to make a sauce. And that's going to start with molasses, some lime juice, and some hot sauce. And I'm just going to whisk that together. Now I am going to arrange my kebab. Start with some chicken, some onion, bacon, and pepper and just continue repeating that and I'm gonna put them onto my grill pan and I'm just gonna let each side cook up for a couple minutes. Tieflings are humanoid creatures with devilish qualities. They usually have horns, prong tails, and a variety of colorful skin tones. They can exist out of a relationship between a devil and a humanoid a relationship between a tiefling and a humanoid, between two tieflings, or when one or more parents, perhaps even grandparents, made a deal with the devil, and giving birth to a tiefling can be a piece of that payment, or hidden side effect. This reason has led some to believe that all tieflings are under the control or being manipulated by Asmodeus. They're viewed as untrustworthy or spies, and that may give in to their devilish nature. But that's up for you, how you DM and you decide to play it. And now that those have cooked through, I'm just going to put on a layer of the sauce and just let that soak for a minute.
This was really delicious, but I can't help but be let down a little bit. I was promised fire spiced and the flavor text talked about how tieflings spice their food so much it's almost dangerous to other people. Now I understand not wanting to make the food so spicy that a lot of people won't eat it, but there wasn't cayenne pepper, little, the little bit of hot sauce that you used, and depending on which hot sauce you used, might not have really added that much heat. So I'm gonna call a little bit of false advertisement on this one. Now I already mentioned a quick fix for that would be putting in a teaspoon of cayenne pepper into the dry mix. That really would have come across more as fire spiced. Otherwise, like I said, it was delicious. The molasses and sugar caramelized very nicely, gave it that little burnt, little sweet crunch, and it was really good. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to let me know if you would rather I take on the Skyrim cookbook or the new WoW cookbook. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at chef underscore Valmore. The links are in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and come on back next week for another recipe.